G'day folks, well in this video I'm going to show you how to solve the Dayan Gem 5 and there's a few versions around, this is the one that I unboxed and reviewed first of all, it's the black bodied version there's also some coloured plastic versions and I did an unboxing of that and some of you may remember I had quite a rant because basically it's just the same puzzle with a different colour scheme now there is one subtle difference which I'll mention when we get to that part but essentially they're the same solving experience now in terms of uh, this puzzle, I don't mind saying, this thing bamboozled me for quite a while uh, quite a while, my time, a few days I suppose um, but the reason for that is that the, there's no obvious discernible colour scheme when it's all scrambled so my first bit of advice is just grab any face like this a face with a large centre, it doesn't matter which one I'm going to grab the white one because that's what I'll be solving first and just note the colour scheme of the three corners that's all you need to remember. If you don't do that you're going to find it quite difficult. So what I've done is look here and say the white green going clockwise around that white face, white grey, white orange and for myself I said that green grey orange alphabetically are in order so that's how I remember it, green grey orange clockwise as long as you do that you'll be fine. If you happen to put two in the wrong place so for instance you did green orange grey all that would happen is later on you'd end up with a situation where you had to swap some corners and you would find that you have to go back and replace these. So it's no biggie but just something to remember. So um, look, let's get into it. The way that I'm going to be doing it is to solve the, I should say what turns, we've got these faces here that turn and then we've got faces like um, this one turning as well. So I guess you can look at it as that central slice but effectively we're only turning hexagonal faces either the ones with the small centers or the ones with the large centers uh, now the biggest problem with this cube is the color scheming and the fact that it's not obvious what is going on particularly when it's scrambled and uh, my suggestion is to as I said firstly just note that color scheme of one of your faces and that is all you'll need but also we're going to have to ignore some colours in certain pieces as we go along and I'll tell you about that as we get there. Um, but having said all that, I'm happy to report that this will make this come out quite simply for you. And I'm only going to be using two sequences. And the first sequence is the edge piece series, just the four moves. And the second sequence is the corner piece series. So I'm quite happy to say that that works on here and I reckon that's probably pretty good scramble, good enough. Now there's a few cases that we'll come across during the bits and so I'll make sure I cover all of them. So when we start the first bit is to locate a centre of your choice, a large centre of your choice. I'm starting with the white and as I said we're going to place corners first and we're going to start with a face so I'm going to find a white corner, there's a white green corner. So i have got to bring that up somehow so I'm just going to turn this part so that it's in the vicinity and then I can turn that up onto the white face. Now I remember that my order was going clockwise white green white grey white orange so that tells me where to place the other ones. So here's a white orange ready to be turned up so I know that if I if I go white green white grey white orange it's got to go here so I'm just going to turn that around and put that into its position and I've got to just find the white grey which is here and I can place that. Having done those corners I'm just going to turn it over I'm now going to work around placing these corners here and the reason for just noting the first face is that now I can look at this and say well here I've got a white orange here I've got a white green so this must be a green corner and this must be an orange corner and you can think which of these colors, the red, blue or the purple, has a green and an orange with it. And on this puzzle, from memory, it's the purple. So I go, there's a purple orange and there should be a purple green somewhere as well. Now if we looked around, for instance, if we looked at the red, we would not be able to find a red orange and a red green. You can see we've got a red grey, got the red yellow and we've got the red green, but we don't have the orange. So what it means is that the purple face needs to sit over here between the orange and the green. So that's the first thing is to get that right. Having done that, the corners will place properly. Now, 
we look up on the top here and we see there's a purple orange corner so we want to bring it sort of around it needs to go into um, because that's the orange face and this is the purple face it needs to go in that position so what we're going to be doing is turning that corner up to the top face and then turning the purple orange on and then putting it down simple as that and you can see the orange face is starting to get built doesn't matter which ones you do, which way you do, but I generally like to work around. So I might look for the purple, uh, this will be the green, so the purple green. And you can see the purple green is over here. So in order to do that, I'm first going to put it up onto the top face, like so. And I'm then going to note that it's got to go in that position. So uh, I've got to turn this corner, uh, now which way is it? I always get confused, there we go, up like that and then I can turn that purple green corner onto it and put it back down. And what you can see is that the orange has lined up, the green has lined up and the purple is starting to build. Very important that you completely ignore the edge colors for now and you completely ignore the centers, the small centers. We'll get to that soon. So having done those two it's fairly simple because there's only one green corner left and it must go there. So here it is and that tells us obviously it's got to be red because we can't have these other two centers swapped. So I'm going to need to turn that up so I'll put the red green corner out of the way, turn it up, put it on and turn it back. Moving around this must be the other red corner so I'll locate that and it happens to be here. Uh, so what else have we got? We've got blue grey up the top that we might as well use. So which one's grey? Grey's there, blue's there. So it's that position. So if that's the blue grey, I think which way am I turning this up? That corner up to the top. Put the blue grey on. Return the corner. We've got a blue orange here. That, where does that go? There's the orange face, there's the blue face, so it belongs here. So this time I'm turning that corner up this way, putting the blue orange on and returning it. And you can see things are starting to build. That's all of the orange corners done, all of the green corners done. And the grey face, we've got that one, and that leaves us just with the grey red corner to do. Now's the time that we look at the top face, and we'll find there'll be two yellow corners in the top face. We need to place them. Uh, we need to look what's going on. One of them will be in position, or we can make it in position, and we want to be left with another two that are out of position. And what that tells us is that the yellow-blue corner, which is down here, needs to go here. The yellow-purple needs to go here, and the grey-red will come back here. So that's our three cycle. So we put the yellow-blue, because it needs to turn onto that position, we're going to put that position um, because we're going to be turning it up like this, uh, which way are we going? That way, like there, we're going to turn that up to there and then complete the three cycle with that piece. So we turn it up, put that on, turn it back and complete the move. That's the most complicated part of the corners really. And remember we did a setup move, so we'll turn that around and that's done. And what you'll see now is that it's very clear that all of these faces are done. And if you just look at the corner pieces on these faces, they are also done. Now, that most of the time completes the corners. However, there is one thing we need to check for. We need to find out whether our little centers here are in a three cycle or placed or in a double swap. If they're placed correctly, and these are not, because you can see the green center is on the yellow face, we're done. If they're in a double swap, then we're done. The only case is where they are in a three cycle. So what have we got? The green goes to there, the orange goes to there, and the yellow goes back to there, which will mean this grey will be in its position. So we do indeed have a three cycle. Now when that happens, we can't deal with that in the simple way that we're going to do it at the end. So what we want to do is turn just this upper part, whatever it is, so that the center places correctly. So we notice that here is the yellow face. So I'm going to turn just this around so that the center places onto the face. That's fixed that. But of course, what have we also done? Well, we've rotated the center here. That doesn't matter. 
can't tell any difference. We've moved some edges around, but at this stage that doesn't matter because we haven't done edges. What we've done is three cycle the corners or move them one piece out of position. And so we need to put them back. Clearly the purple orange goes back here, the purple green goes back here, and the purple yellow goes back there. So we need to carry out a three cycle of those corners to finish it off. And the easiest way that I've found is simply to turn the third piece down to there and then turn those two corners around so that I've got one, two, three ready to three cycle and I can then carry that out. Like so, and then undo the setup moves. And you remember the setup moves were that and that. And when that's done, what you'll notice is that the centers are all in their correct faces, and the corners are also all in their correct faces, and these faces are done as well, which means that we really only have the edges left to do. So that completes the first part of the solve. Now, the next part of the solve is going to be to deal with the edges. And there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can cycle the edges one by one directly into their correct positions, or you can do what I'm going to do here and just pair them up. And once we've paired them up, we'll move them easily where they belong, where the pairs belong. So as an example of what to do, I'm first going to show you what this looks like on a solved puzzle. Let's have a look at that now. Okay, to move around edges on this puzzle, what we're looking for is two edges that are on one of these thin hexagonal faces. And it doesn't matter if they need to move clockwise or anti-clockwise. We can deal with both. So in this case, I'm just going to move this edge to here to start with. And so what we want to look for is once that's in position, we want to hold the puzzle so that we've got the edge in basically, I guess, the back left position. And it's going to an edge in whatever you want to call that position that edge will come down to here. We're going to see how to carry this out. It's a very simple sequence. It's called the corner piece series. Here it goes. Up, I should say, actually, before I start, we've got to have a chunky hexagonal face as up, and we're turning a chunky hexagonal face as right, but we're going to turn the thin hexagonal face as left. That's what makes it work. Let's go now. So going up, right, up prime, left prime and you can see there's the thin turn up right prime up prime left and we see first of all that that yellow red edge that was here has now rolled to there the edge that was here which is the yellow green one you can see has now rolled down to here and it's clear to see that it's done that when we put that in its starting position there it is, now down into that position. And the grey orange edge that used to be here has gone up to the third position. And in fact, that's all that has been moved. None of the centres, none of the corners have been touched. So that is a pure edge three cycle, just using the corner piece series. Now we can, of course, do the mirror. And so to do the mirror, and this will probably involve a setup move, which is good. The mirror involves turning the two pieces on the right hand side. So I'd say the red wants to go there. This orange is going to be the second piece, and then holding the puzzle in that position, that will be my third piece. So I want to find that third piece, which looks like it's this one here, and put it down into this position before I start. So I'll just do a setup here, put it there, and then down like that. And so we'll now see these three pieces involved. So this time, the corner piece series is up prime, left prime, up right, up prime, left, up, right prime. Now that's done, we just need to undo those setup moves and we can see when we do that, went the long way, that in fact we've replaced those edges. So very simple sequence, move around your edges at will, that's all there is to it. Okay. Now back to the real puzzle, what we've got, we know that we're looking for an edge that can move around one of these small or thinner hexagonal faces like that. So that blue wants to pair up with this blue. So that's in a good position. So because of that, I'm going to hold the puzzle so that that can go to there. This piece is going to that piece, and you'll know that the third piece is down here. 
So if I could, I'd make that piece such that when it comes back to here, it'll correctly pair with that piece. And in other words, it needs to be a white to correctly pair with that. So I'll look and see whether it's possible to put the white piece, which is here, onto there before I start. And in this case, that is not only possible, but quite simple. So I'm actually going to pair the whites and the blues with this move. So having placed those pieces, I carried out, because I've got these two pieces on the right, I'm doing an anti-clockwise corner piece series. And the only difference, of course, is that I now turn this thin face. There we go, that's done, and you'll notice that we've got the setup move to undo, so we'll do that. Now let's have a look what's happened. We've returned all these centres, all these corners and centres, and we've got the blue pair and the white pair. That's what we're aiming to do. That was pretty painless, I'm sure you'll agree. So then we look around and find something else that needs to pair. We can see that the yellow has got to go down to here, so that will provide our next turn. And again, we'll try and look for the other red piece, because the other red piece is going to go there. And if we could get it there first, that would be even better. And this normally happens. Once again, the red piece is in a nice little position just to rotate on that face around to there. That's a very easy setup move, and so we're going to place two, or we're going to get two of these pairs done at once. So again, away we go. That's completed. We had one setup move to do and if we get stuck with it we can see that that red colour needs to come back to here. So that completes the yellows and the reds. So we already had the whites and the blues, so we can only really have a couple left, and we've got the greens and the oranges. Now, when we come to this situation, we've really got uh, a swap of an edge. So essentially what's got to happen is that this has got to go to there and that's got to go to there. Um, so I guess there's a couple of ways that we could approach it. We can't just turn this face like that to place one of them because you can see that what it does is put the corners out of position so that's not an option. What we need to do is think um, something along the lines of the following. Now we know that the green has got to come down here next to that green to make that pair. We also know that the orange needs to pair up with this orange and the only way that's going to happen is if the orange goes and replaces that orange and this orange replaces that green. In other words the three cycle is here to here to here. When that happens, the green will pair there, and this orange will go here, and this orange will go here. So we'll have an orange pair up the top. So we first know that we've got those two pieces involved. We also know that this orange needs to be placed in the third piece position. So we hold the puzzle as we need it, which is as follows. And so we've got those two pieces there, and the third piece needs to be in that position. Now where was that orange? It's up here. So we've got to move that down to there before we start. So we think... The setup move is that this piece, you can see, is going to come down to there. So that means the orange needs to be placed in that position before we start. So we've got two setup moves. That orange goes to there, and then that piece comes down. Now that we've got the three pieces in position, we can go ahead and carry out the corner piece series. And as soon as we've done that, we'll then just return the setup moves to where they were. And we'll have a look around, and what we'll notice is that that orange has paired with that orange, and that green has paired with that green. More importantly, we've got all these centres still intact, and these faces have centres and triangles still intact. So if we look around, we'll see that the edges have all been paired up. Now, basically, the final stage of the solve is to place those edges. So this is where you've got to make sure you forget about the colour of this. So forget about that white colour, forget about that blue colour. It's completely irrelevant for placing them. What you want to concentrate on is the colours on the sides. So this is a green-orange edge. That means it's got to be placed between the green face and the orange face. So in fact, this is here. It needs to be flipped. Now this is good. I'll show you exactly how to flip one of these edges. What we want to do... And all we're going to do is edge piece series to move these edge pairs around. 
what I want to do is something like take it out of position first. So I'm going to move it down to here and then involve that edge pair and then complete the edge piece series. Um, having done that, you can see it's down here now, I want to put it back into there by turning its position around and turning the edge onto its position and then putting it back and completing that move. And, and making sure that we complete all four moves means that the corners remain where they should be. Now what you'll notice now straight away is that that orange center is out of place. That's absolutely fine and we're guaranteed that they're going to be in a 2 plus 2 swap because we made sure of that earlier in the solve. Now having a look at this edge pair you can see as I said ignoring the blue the orange is correctly placed and the green is correctly placed and that's why we don't even need to know what that color is. It's got to be right. That's how we place the edge pairs. So I would look for another example here and um, for instance I've got a green grey so I think where does that go? Well that goes between the grey and the green so it goes in that position. Uh, so it's over here and so I think I can really involve any three edge pairs. So I'm going to involve this one, this one and this one. And so I'm going to turn this one around and then place that green grey one onto it and then I'm going to turn it back onto its position and then complete the turns. Again notice that the corners have all come back and more importantly we've placed that green grey edge. Alright we've got an orange grey one here, got no idea where that goes, if it's too far away I'll just do another one but it goes into that position and so what I'll see is that the grey is on the top so it's going to travel up to there so that'll work nicely so I'll do something quite similar. Turn its position around, put it on, put it into position and complete the move. And that's placed that edge pair. Now we're probably down to our last three now, I would suspect. And so you can see that the entirety of that half is now done. So these last three, let's have a look what's going on. We've got the yellow orange, which needs to go to here. We've got the yellow green that needs to come down to here and we've got the yellow grey that needs to go to here. So we've got a nice little three cycle to, to finish placing the edges and so we go, we know that that piece has got to turn to that piece. We know which piece to turn because if we try to turn this yellow grey piece into its position it's flipped. You can see the grey is next to the yellow, not next to the grey. So that is the third of our pieces, it's the last piece we involve. So we turn that onto there that to there and then undo those moves and what we'll see is that all of those three edge pairs have placed. Now that's the nicest way to finish the edge pairs. We do need to have a look though at what happens if we have a pair of swapped edge pairs. Let's look at that now. Now what we see here is we've actually got an edge pair swap. So we've got this yellow green edge pair which needs to go here to the yellow green position and we've got the yellow orange edge pair that needs to come here. And what it actually is, it's not, not a, it's any kind of parity thing, it's just a double swap of edges. And let's think this one through. We know that the yellow red has to go over to this yellow position here. We know that because it's on the yellow face so it can only go there. And we know also that this yellow white must go there. So there's one swap of the edges and in fact when the yellow red goes around to here we'll have a red one here and so the other red one needs to come to that position and that of course means that that white edge needs to go back there so there's the second swap so because we've got a double swap it's essentially the same as a three cycle we want to treat it as a three cycle so how do we do that well first of all we're going to need two cycles to do it first of all we're going to just move one of the edges it doesn't matter which one so let's move the red edge over to here to begin with. So we're going to put the red edge to there and that'll at least place that edge into its correct position. So given that that's the case, we're holding the puzzle like this, we've got the red coming to here, we need a third piece down here and we know we can involve that one. So we'll just turn that around as a setup and then carry out our standard corner piece series. Alright, now you can see when we turn that back that the red edge has moved. Now we've got this white edge and these two out of position. 
Now clearly the red edge here has got to come down to here and the white edges have got to get together. So basically the white has got to go to here, the white's got to go to here and the red has got to come down to here. So we just want to do a little bit of a setup. So we're going to first set up to put the two whites onto that same face. You remember that I said the white needs to go to the white, white to red and red down to here. So with that set up I can now again look at this and say there's my two that need to move and so I'll hold the puzzle like that and then put that third red piece down into that position. So we've got two setup moves this time but they're pretty easy to undo. We're now ready to carry out that corner piece series. There we go, that's done. And we can then undo the setup. So here was the first setup, and that's clearly in position. We can say, what's the next one? Uh, yes, it was turning this back to get the corners back. And you can see that the edges are now not swapped. So we've carried out that cycle. We had the centers done, so they're still done. So that's how we deal with a swapped pair of edges. Okay, and so the final stage of the solve is if you have these centers that are out, this is the quickest stage of all, we just need to put those little centers back. It's super easy. So we just locate the two centers that need to swap and those two centers, the gray and green, need to swap and so the other two will be, they'll also need to swap. So all we're doing is turning or doing an edge piece series like so. That's one of them and we just do three of them exactly the same. Last one. And you'll notice when that happens those centers have all placed and that indeed completes the solve of Day and Gem 5.